Hi everyone, I'm Zenzo with Aquarium Co-op, and today I'm gonna to talk about some different stocking ideas for a medium-sized aquarium. Now when I say medium-sized aquarium, I know that size is relative to people's ideas about fish tanks. So for this video, I'm thinking about a 40 gallon breeder, which is a very common size that you can find in many stores and kind of the entry level into a little bit larger of an aquarium. However, some of these fish that I'm gonna recommend would work in a slightly smaller tank, like a 30 gallon or so aquarium, and obviously larger aquariums like a 55 gallon. Now the first setup that I'm gonna recommend is the planted community tank. Now planted community tank, there are so many different options that you can have because there are a lot of fish that do well in community aquariums. Now something that I always like to see is I always like to see something that's a little bit more of like a showcase fish, but a pair. So maybe that's a pair of like a Pistagrama or a pair of Bolivian Rams. Those would do well in a planted community tank. And having like a big school of Tetras. I love to see like rummy nose Tetras or a big bunch of neon Tetras. So if you have a pair of a Pistagrama and maybe like 12 to 15 neon Tetras, you really have that fun different dynamic with their really bright colors. And then to kind of finish it up, maybe like a school of Corydora to swim around the bottom and have that bottom activity. Now the next tank that I'm gonna recommend is the colorful cichlid tank. And when I think of colorful cichlids, I think of fish from Lake Malawi. Now in a medium sized tank, a lot of African cichlids don't do well because they need a little bit more space, 55, 75 gallons or larger, but some fish do very well in medium-sized tanks, and the ones that I would recommend are Pseudotrophia solosi. Now, some people call them Chidongo solosi because there was a name change a few years back, but whether you call them Chidongo or Pseudotrophias, the solosi are beautiful fish. Now, they're very fun to keep for one specific reason, and that is the dimorphism. Now, the dimorphism with the Pseudotrophia solosi is that the males are blue and the females are yellow. So basically, you get two fish in one, and these fish don't get very large. They stay about three to three and a half inches or so and smaller so you can do have a few males and some females the females are bright yellow the males are brilliant blue with dark blue kind of bands or stripes and they breed very easily have lots of rock work and hiding places for them to live in so that uh, they can spawn and the fry can survive but they do really well in a 40 gallon breeder I've got a bunch behind me in a 75 gallon but I used to have them in a 40 gallon tank and they were perfect for a 40 gallon breeder so that would be my suggestion if you're looking for a colorful, active, interactive, fun fish to have that's you know bright, lots of colors. When you have people come over, they'll look at your tank and say, wow, that's really pretty, what are those? And they are your solosi. The next tank that I'm gonna recommend is the brackish tank. Now brackish water might be a little bit daunting for some people, but it's very easy. It's a lot easier than you might think about. And we actually have an article on the Aquarium Co-op website to tell you all about how to set up a brackish tank. And it's not any specific science at all, so don't be scared. But a brackish tank is basically a tank that has a mixture of fresh water and salt water. And it's a lot easier to keep than salt water tanks because you don't have to be exact with the salinity or the specific gravity of the brackish tank. And there are lots of cool fish that open up to you when you have brackish water. The tank that I'm gonna suggest is have a green spotted puffer or a figure eight puffer. These are both smaller to medium sized puffers that will do well in a 40 gallon breeder. They are you know, bright kind of yellowish gold or uh, like a figure eight pattern with a white underbelly. They have that beautiful, cool puffer look with their big, beautiful eyes. It just makes you wanna sit there and interact with them and feed them snails and bloodworms. So a very fun fish to have. And then a pair with those, I would do some night gobies. Now night gobies are a very unique fish. A lot of people don't know about night gobies, but they are very cool to look at. They do very well in brackish water and they're large enough to uh, cohabitate with either of those puffers that I mentioned without any any issues. I actually have a 40 gallon breeder with a green spotted puffer and some night gobies. And the thing that I would do is have maybe a few caves and rock piles for the night gobies to kind of retreat and hide just because they're a little bit more shy. And then the puffer will kind of cruise around and look for snails to eat and things like that. But a very fun tank to have. The next tank that I'm gonna recommend is the wet pet tank. And when I think of wet pets, I think of like a single fish that's kind of like your little water puppy. Now a 40 gallon breeder or something that's around that size, it kind of limits you 
on certain fish that people consider to be wet pets. You could do like a flower horn for a, for a period of time. Oscars get a little bit too big, but one fish that doesn't get too big that would do well in a 40 gallon breeder is a fancy goldfish. Now, fancy goldfish are very fun. They're cute. You can get them in different coloration and sizes and shapes, like an Aranda as an example with that kind of big, cool head. The great thing about a goldfish tank is that you don't need a heater. They pre prefer to be at kind of cooler, a little bit cooler water, so you don't need to have like a, a heater running all the time. And um, it's a great single fish to have. Now, if you are gonna have some tank mates with the goldfish, make sure that it's something that's not gonna be too robust, that's gonna bother the goldfish. And also something that it's not small enough or sharp enough for that goldfish to get caught in its mouth if it accidentally eats it. Um, a dojo loach would be kind of a good tank bait to have. As far as plants, you know, maybe some hardier plants like Anubia, some things like that, that aren't going to be eaten by the goldfish, but other types of plants they'd probably eat. Now, the last tank that I'm gonna recommend is probably for me, the funnest tank of these. And that's kind of that person that's really into unique, cool, nerdy stuff, right? And that's gonna be the Tanganyikan Rockscape tank. 40 gallon breeder, you can do so much with Tanganyikan fish. Now, Lake Tanganyika is a lake in East Africa where you've got a lot of different species of fish. And I think that this would be a great scape if you're really looking for some different dynamics in that same aquarium. So maybe you don't have a bunch of aquariums like in this room. Maybe you just have space for a couple of aquariums, but you want to experience some different types of fish in that same tank. A Tanganyikan tank would do that for you. I would do kind of like a crushed coral or a sandy bottom with a big pile of rocks in the middle. And then I would put a bunch of uh, empty snail shells, like escargot shells down. And I would have shell dwellers and I would do some rock dwellers. So maybe like some Julietochromis. Um, you could do some uh, Neolamprologus lalupi. You could do calvis. And, and having a bunch of shell dwellers like Neolamprologus multifasciatus. You could do uh, similis. You could do brevis or ocelotus. You could do all these really cool shell dwellers that will live in the shell area. And then you'll have these other fish that are occupying the rocks and they'll all pretty much kind of stay in their own area. There'll be a little bit of tension and bickering a little bit. This is not for the squeamish because they're, they are a little bit semi-aggressive with one another. But uh, if you do have like that pile of rocks and all those shells, they will cohabitate. And it is a very fun tank to just kind of sit in front of and to stare at for a few hours and just watch all the things that go on in that tank. So hopefully this video gave you some ideas on some different stocking ideas for a 40 gallon breeder or that medium sized aquarium. If you wanna know how many fish you can fit in your tank and how to figure that out, then watch this video right here.